Hey, I think we're live here and we're back. Dr. J, Evan in the house. Evan, what's going on, man? Not too much. A beautiful day in the bluegrass state. How was your Vegas trip? Oh, it's good, man. Very good. I try to do it as uh, optimally as possible. I did a nice little, nice little video on this topic on YouTube, but really not skipping meals for the most part. You know, I have at least have a good breakfast, right? Key is good protein and fat to start the day, especially if you're coming off the night, maybe consuming a little bit more alcoholic beverages. You want to make sure that blood sugar is pretty decent. Uh, number two is hydration in between drinks. Three, activated charcoal. And um, four, adding in some detoxification nutrients, the sulfur-based amino acids, a lot of the B vitamins, a lot of the nutrients to run those phase one, phase two detoxification pathways. So here I am, man, rocking it, kicking butt. How about you, man? I'm good. My mom, uh, she actually works on the strip in Vegas, and I lived out there for six years. So I've got a lot of good memories of Vegas, man. It's a, it's a good place. People say, oh, it's not a good place to live or raise kids, but I think I turned out fine for being out there six years in my teenage years. <laughs> yeah, how did you survive out there in your teenage years, man? That's crazy. I mean, I went to high school out there, and a lot of people, I was mostly the designated driver, to be honest. I had a lot of friends that were in the cool crowd, the cheerleaders and football players and such, and I just drove them around. I didn't mind. So. Love it, man. Very cool. Well, we got some good news. Well, number one, I'm back from Vegas alive and intact and doing great. Yes. Uh, number two is you got a stool test back and you are infection free. So, well, congratulations. You are a healthy, disease free young gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It took, it took a while. I mean, just to give people some backstory, if they're new to uh, Justin and I and some of the, the work that we've done on our guts, uh, basically, I had some weight loss and I did not know why. And I came to Justin's house and he looked at me. He said, Man, you've got a parasite. And I was like, Oh, come on. And I, Took about took about two or three months, I think, for me to finally run the stool test on myself. And yeah. I ended up showing up with two parasite infections, which then we discussed an herbal protocol, which implemented perfectly into my diet, into my lifestyle strategies I was already implementing. I got rid of the parasites, but then totally. once I retested, I had H. pylori, which is a very common, at least in our clinics, very common bacterial infection that is just so damaging to the gut. And then I had to start working on the H. pylori. And then after I was working on that, I got a stool test that showed Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Yeah. And so after the H. pylori, then I had these bacterial bugs to work on. And then finally, 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 after some more work, now I'm clear of everything. No Pseudomonas, no nothing. Beneficial bacteria look good. All the bad bacteria are gone. And I'm feeling better than ever. And I'm sleeping better than I have in quite some time. So you showed I, those critters who's boss man, huh? I did. I got them out of there. You did. Now you had the three amigos, didn't you? Was it crypto, blasto, G, um, H. pylori? Only the two amigos. No blasto, crypto, and H. Well, yeah, I guess we could say three amigos. H. pylori, uh, giardia, and crypto, but no blasto. Okay. H. pylori, giardia, and crypto. Okay. Those are some nasty critters. I know. Oof, glad we got them out. It took a little while, but I'm glad you're doing a lot better and you've noticed a difference too. I mean, we've seen, you can go back to your older YouTube videos to now your skin's a lot clearer. That's pretty obvious. Right. And then also you're sleeping better too. Right. And then how are you doing? I know you were having some anxiety and some panic attacks stuff, but that's, that's better, right? It's gone. It's See? gone. I think it was gut issues because like I told you, I, I'm, I'm not an anxious person by nature. And I told you, I was like, man, I have no idea why I'm anxious like this. And yeah, I, I, I remember you, you said lost it was a lot of weight. Remember, you lost a lot of weight. I, I didn't know you like when I saw you for the first time two years ago. We just met. Yeah. But I'd seen pictures of you for the year or two before. And I'm like, dude, you've lost a lot of weight. Like, I imagine you were probably, you know, you being a paleo guy, you were probably already pretty healthy to begin with. What happened? Were you just not on your diet or did something else happen? You're like, oh, no, I've been eating this way for the last year or two. And I'm like, but you lost so much weight. That's not right. You look too lean. There must be some kind of malabsorption. And I knew your other symptoms, which weren't even gut related. So everyone who's listening to this, if you have any mood or um, mood issues or energy issues, you can still have a gut infection and not have those typical GI symptoms. The, the typical ones being like bloating, gas, cramping, diarrhea, those kind of things, constipation, right? Right. Yeah. It could be anxiety, depression, irritability, mood swings, rage, anger. There's so many symptoms that 
you could go to a psychiatrist for and get put on benzodiazepines or other prescription meds for the brain, but it's not going to work because it's the gut that's the problem. And so you've got to really get the gut checked out. I mean, I think the cool thing about you and I is that we've been in the trenches. We've been working on our own health for so long. We've basically suffered with everything that we work on with our clients now yeah. versus we've just read the books. We haven't just read the books. We've had to deal with all of this stuff personally. What about you? I wanted to ask about you in terms of in terms of your stool test. You had some things that popped up. Now, have you done a retest yet or not yet? Um, I've not retested yet. I mean, a lot of the things I was asymptomatic with, I just had a, a couple, like one little critter that was just a tiny bit over on the quantitation on the DNA and then a little bit of dysbiotic bacteria. But right now I'm doing uh, some probiotics. So as soon as I finish my probiotics, I will, I will retest right after. I'm also doing a little detox action as well. But overall digestion regularity for me is good. Um, no major GI symptoms. I could, my biggest health issue right now, I think I need about one more hour of sleep. How many one hours? hours of sleep. Well, they're good. Uh, I think I'm just going to bed a tiny bit too late. I'm going to bed a little too close to midnight. I need to go oh. to bed a little closer to 11 to 10. I'm just getting to bed a little too late. You know what time I go to bed? <laughs> I know, like nine, nine, nine thirty. You're like yeah. an eight year old man. Well, I know. Well, it's uh, it's with the baby. I mean, because the baby, mm -hmm. she goes down about seven, seven thirty. So you're at that point, you're you've cleaned up everything around the house. It's like, okay, what's next? And so you might as well just go to bed by by nine. And so I'm getting, oh, man, I'm waking up about seven. So nine to seven. That's a lot of sleep. Yeah, I need a little downtime at night. Like I watch a little. Uh, Netflix or Amazon video. I just got to detune. Like my day is just too serious. So I got to like <laughs> get like, you know, a little uh, TV action in there. So right now I'm watching Designated Survivor. And then what else am I doing? I just finished a series. Oh, Billions. That was season finale was last night. That was awesome. What is that? Oh, oh it's just a show on sh uh, Showtime, I think. So I, I do about an hour of TV at night to wind down. I need it, man. I need it. I wonder what would happen if you hooked your brain up to brain waves. I wonder if you're producing more alpha waves like if you're daydreaming when you're when you're watching tv or what's actually happening on the the neurotransmitter level that makes yeah, you feel good it's probably just turning my brain off and i'm just not thinking and i'm just totally in entertainment state and just chilling which yeah. is nice because you know we're just go 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 and then you know in between patients and during my lunch i'm audio learning whether i'm learning about something in in the world or something with health so i'm always getting information going in so if i can just decrease um, that knowledge and, and get some fiction going in there so I can just kind of relax that that makes a big difference for me. I think one issue with a lot of practitioners I see is the lack of sustainability where you've got massively overweight or sick or depressed or exhausted yeah. practitioners. And it's probably due to an imbalance between the work life. And for us working from our home offices, we're even more susceptible to that. So yeah. I think we've we've done really good. I don't know if this applies to many people listening. I know we do have some practitioners, but my advice for those people is you've got to know when to basically say no, delegate, which you teach me about, and then also yep. making sure that when you say you're done with your work, you're done with your work. So this might not this could apply to other people that are not practitioners as well. I mean, there's a lot of people now that they bring their work computers home or they bring their smartphones home and they're checking work emails at 8 p.m. or at the dinner table even. And so that's not a good idea. And we've really got to actually turn off completely because you can't be in a rest and digest and fight or flight mode at the same time. Maybe you can, but I don't think it's going to work. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. So, I mean, the goal of health really is to make your make yourself more adaptable, right? The goal of being healthy, like if you got to do all these diet and lifestyle things and you need perfection, well, what fun is that? Now, there may be some people out there who are more on the autoimmune side and have, let's say, a lower threshold to, to do things. So their sleep has to be on. Their diet really has to be on, nearly perfect. And sometimes like when people say like, oh, moderation is key. Well, for some people, that may not be the case. So autoimmune, really people that have been chronically ill for a while, we got to keep in mind their state. But if you've built up your health over the last year or two, diet, lifestyle, hormones, gut, detox are all running pretty good, you're feeling pretty good, then ideally there can be a little bit of laxity in what you can do. So like me going to Vegas last weekend, of course, uh, I partook in some adult libations, which were great, but you know, I keep the sugar down. I try to choose drinks that have low mycotoxin load, and I try to choose drinks that 
are going to be better for me in the end. So clean, clear vodkas with lemon juice or dry wines, you know, keeping it, keeping the sugar and the junk and the artificial crap out of there. So that makes a huge difference for me utilizing charcoal when I'm taking these things because, you know, if you go to I, long story, my freshman year in college, many years ago, my roommate got so drunk he had to go to the ER because alcohol poisoning, and they gave him this huge thing of charcoal, right, to what drink, it? and it was a, a full, it, it was charcoal drink, oh. and I remember sitting there back in the day, I'm like, oh, wow, that's interesting, this thing is to help detoxify, and then it connected with me back then, well, why don't we just do this while you're drinking, and do it in a capsule form so you're not drinking the bloody charcoal drink. <laughs> So, so I, you I take, think that's a good option. Now, let me ask, do you take the charcoal at the same exact time? So you get the beverage yeah. and then you whip out the charcoal right then? Well, in general, like if I'll, I'll have a couple in my pocket when I start drinking. I'll take some and then I'll take some at the end of drinking. I mean, the charcoal is going to sit in your intestinal tract for, you know, three to six hours. So I think as long as you're within a couple hour window, you're pretty good. So does that reduce your buzz? Like, let's say if you didn't take any charcoal before, you took a shot or two and then you took the charcoal. It's like... Are you, are you it potentially could it potentially could for me? I didn't notice a huge difference with the, the buzz, but you could always wait till, you know, you're kind of halfway in there and then, cause then you kind of got the, you got some momentum going right with that buzz and then you can take some in the beginning and then the end. That's fine too. I'm a lightweight. If I have one shot, I'm toast. Yeah. So we got a couple yeah, questions. Probably, right? What were you going to say? You probably have some kind of alcohol dehydrogenase enzyme issue. It's always it's always been that way, man. As as long yeah. as I've lived, I've had so. I mean, even if I drink three sips of a cider, I'm I'm buzzed, dude. I mean, I'm I'm a pretty big guy. I'm six two two fifteen, right? And my friends who are much smaller than me, they can drink me under the table. I can a drink or two. I'm buzzed, man. That's it. I'm done. Wow. So, I didn't know you're. Yeah. I didn't know you're sensitive. That's interesting. Yeah, I am. I'm just like you, man. It's probably something in the genes. Well, it could be clean clean diet too, wouldn't you say? Has to well, be effective. I mean, there, there's that fact too of just not drinking a lot, right? It's like, you know, the alcoholic's not going to make the argument that they have a healthier liver because they can drink more, right? Yep. It's their their tolerance is so decrease or increase because they drink so much. Yeah. Right. Our tolerance is decreased. We're more sensitive because we're not exposing our body to those toxins. So that makes a lot of sense to me. I'm gonna I'm gonna begin taking the amino detox from designs. I'm gonna start taking that because I went to Lowe's. Last week, we were looking for something. I don't remember what it was. And I walked past the Roundup and all of the fertilizers, yeah. and I got a massive headache. And I'm like, oh, my Lord. So I'm going to start oh, taking wow. the phase two, phase two aminos and see if that fixes that That's multiple smart. chemical sensitivity issue. That's good. Yeah, I'm on my detox aminos right now, taking some of those and some liver supreme, which is a lot of the gallbladder and, and B, extra B vitamins and such. So I'm doing that now. So it's are good. you doing, are you doing full dose? Cause I know with the aminos, it'll say like six capsules. Are you doing all six at yeah. one time? Uh, not at one time, typically three and three. Cause I've done, morning and night. cause I've done the N-acetylcysteine before and I felt massive headache when I took NAC, like 500 milligrams by itself in isolation. I felt terrible. So I'm thinking dude, I need to space it out. Dude, you're pretty toxic, man. Uh oh. <laughs> you gotta now you just probably your body's just probably opening up the floodgates and it's like, whoa. So you just gotta probably just start. And if you just taper it over a couple of days, your body will adjust to it. Well, that NAC, right. that was back before I before I even investigated with those parasites. So oh. I probably just had a lot of endotoxins from those. Yeah, man. If you if you take the boiling water and you get it up to full temperature, you throw a frog and it jumps out. You start it low, you turn it up slowly, you cook a frog. Yep. For, yeah, sure. for sure. You wanna you wanna answer these questions? We've got a question That's from cool. James here. James says, welcome back. Love the Q&A. What do you guys think about colostrum for gut repair for colitis? Yeah, I think colostrum is excellent. I mean, it has a lot of growth factors in it that can help repair the tight junctions. And there's lots of ways to do it. Like um, I use my GI Restore formula primarily, which has a lot of the amino acids, aloe, DGL, slippery elm, you know, modified citrus pectin, little cat's claw on there. That's good too. Um, you know, you only can have so many, so many formulas, but I think colostrum is good as well. I think it's great. Just try to make sure it's grass-fed sourced, organic sourced because of the hormones. And then try to make sure it's casein-free. A lot of um, colostrum companies, like the best ones, they'll pull the casein out just because the casein, the main protein in the dairy, can be inflammatory and potentially drive leaky gut. So colostrum is that growth compound that comes out in that first 48 hours after one of these baby cows is delivered. So they let the baby cow get their amount first, and then they come in after and grab the tail end. Ah, it's so great. we want to look for professional grade. I'm not sure. I believe is Allergy Research Group. They've got a good professional grade colostrum yeah. as well. 
allergies got one i think a company called new medica they have a decent one too they have some um various sprays too like a, a prp spray proline rich polypeptide which is an extract from collagen as well ah interesting so mm -hmm. colostrum versus collagen can you compare and contrast a bit there uh i think the best the way i know about it is collagen or colostrum is basically that you know the um it's like the first, first milk. First milk in that first 48 hour period. And what they've done is they've kind of extracted some of these active components in the colostrum, which are these proline rich polypeptides. So it's kind of like, um, for instance, like in wormwood, right? People come in and they take artemisin in the active component in wormwood, right? So it's kind of like that. It's more of a more concentrated extract. That I think sense. taking the uh, colostrum is great. Um, some great benefits with the PRP, especially in a lot of autistic kids too. Yep. Yep. Okay. Love it. Riley. What can I do for gut healing if I still have leaky gut after parasite killing all infections, yeast, et cetera? Well, how do you know you have leaky gut? Is that just skin symptoms or, or yeah, what so is that? Yeah, so most people that say or think they have leaky gut after gut issues, they're typically basing it off of some kind of symptoms, right? Yeah. There's only a couple of tests out there that really test for leaky gut. I think they're kind of a waste because Me too. you want to look at the causes of a leaky gut, right? The main causes of a leaky gut are going to be infections. They're going to be food sensitivities or food allergen issues. Um, low enzymes and low acid issues typically caused by the above two and also eating in very stressful environments. So if you're eating in stressful environments, that can decrease the parasympathetic nervous system, right? Works like a seesaw. The PNS over here, the SNS over here. And then the more the sympathetic nervous system is activated, that will shut down digestive secretions acids and take the blood flow out of the gut into the limbs because you're ready to fight and flight ready to mobilize that glycogen into fuel so you can run so we want to eat in a way that's going to really activate that pns parasympathetic nervous system let's break so, that down a bit more eating in the stressful yeah. environment there's some restaurants out there that are so loud i almost feel like you should wear headphones yeah. Noise canceling headphones in there. I mean, noise is going to be a factor. Not chewing your food is going to be a factor. If you're arguing and eating, like you're having an argument over dinner, that's not a good idea. Um, not chewing your food enough, not supporting optimal HCL. So if you could have the ability to do a bunch of limes or lemon juice, if I go to a restaurant, I just order a gigantic bowl of citrus fruit and put that in the water. If I have to use the tap water, just put a bunch of lime and lemon in there. Apple cider vinegar is a cool one too. What else would be a detriment to Mealtime, you're saying, like a stressful mealtime. What else could contribute? Well, there was a video Paul Check put out yesterday. It was really good. And one of the things he said, he was with this businessman over in London, you know, multi-millionaire guy, and he did. He ate a lot of his meals during business meetings. So every meeting he was doing was work-related, and he was eating and doing business. One of the things he told this client, this businessman to do is, hey, you're going to eat your meals in solitude. You're going to give yourself a half an hour for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and eat in total quiet. And it made just a huge difference on his digestion alone. Forget enzymes and acids and supplements. Now, I think if you add the supplements in and do that, then you get a supercharged result. So I think do the combination of the above. Then at least give yourself 15 minutes. Now, when I go to a restaurant, the first thing I do is I order like a San Pellegrino or a Topo Chico water with a lime. I drink that and then give myself five or 10 minutes before I eat. So I hydrate and then give myself at least five minutes before I eat. For sure. Okay. So well I get said. the minerals and I get the hydration in there. And plus, the biggest issue is, you know, the transverse lateral um, part of the hypothalamus there, the apostat in the um, HPA axis, that part of the brain, it's so easy to confuse thirst and hunger. So I always want to reset my hunger by ensuring I get enough water before I eat. So I'm, I'm hitting some, some LaCroix, which is some uh, sparkling mineral water, and then some infused mineral water here. Love it. I'm going to have my lunch in like 10 minutes here, right? So Love I want to make sure my appetite's dialed in because I don't want to overeat. I want to let my my body's apostat regulate how much I eat. Apostat. I've not heard that that name, but I've known about that where a lot of people will say that they're hungry, but they're actually just thirsty. Yeah, it's like the trans I think it's the transverse lateral nucleus in the hypothalamus. I could be wrong, but that's kind of the area where known as the apostat, right? The ap apostat's the appetite center. 
in oh, that okay. vein, in okay. the hypothalamus. Kind of so, the same thing. So Ryla gave us a bit of follow-up here. He said he meant leaky gut symptoms, as in when he eats eggs, he feels extremely fatigued after. These symptoms haven't improved since parasite infection killing. Uh, yeah, that's probably, I mean, there could be a leaky gut happening as a result of the food allergen, but the issue is that may just be a food allergen that's there for right now. You just can't do and eggs right it now. May, it may not go away for right now. Now, what I typically recommend is every month try reintroducing it back in, but how you reintroduce eggs back in is huge because if you add cooked scramble eggs, there could be some oxidation that happens with the protein and cholesterol compounds in the egg yolk. So the yep. first thing you want to do is trim away the whites and then just soft boil the yolk so it comes out kind of like it's poached and enough so if you poked it, it would run. So what I've and done – that's how you should do to start. What I've done, tell me if you if you do it differently – I'll just put the egg into the skillet, like a ceramic skillet, cook it on very low, almost like a simmer temperature, as low as possible to not disturb the proteins. And then once the once the white has started to form, I'll just like shave the knife around it and then just leave the the yolk. And then usually by the time you transfer it to your plate, it's just it's just it's already broken and turns into runniness. Yeah, that's good. I mean, the reason why I like the water better is because you get a more complete cook. So it's under under the heat less less time. And then number two, water can only go 212 degrees Fahrenheit before it evaporates. So you got a capacitor at 212 uh -huh. where That's that skillet cool. could go, you know, if you keep it on low, you're probably fine. Right. Yeah. But it can go, you know, three, four, 500 degrees potentially. Yep. Yep. So Riley, if you've got your parasite and infections, you've already got those addressed and you're hundred percent sure that you're clear, you've run the GI map or other similar panel and you're clear. Yeah, sounds like you've got to pull out eggs for 30 days if you're fatigued. Yeah, yeah and I'm, I'm familiar with Riley's case here too. So the cool. big issue is it may just be an allergy and you got to just keep it out every month, try it back in, do it the right way, runny egg yolks. And then if that goes good, then you can start trimming or adding in the, the, the whites to it. And then if that goes in, you can start doing a more complete cook and back into a scramble. Okay, cool, cool. We got and, one more question from and one more thing I want to add to the big ways to test leaky gut. The big methods out there are going to be the lactulose mannitol test and then the zonula and occludin test by Cyrex. Those are the only two that I know that are actually looking at leaky gut. Yeah. They look at LPS, zonula, and occludin, and then the lactulose mannitol. I think it's the lactulose sugar is the, the larger sugar molecule, which it, if it goes into the urine, that means it's passed through the gut lining. So that means the gut's a little bit leaky because that molecule's too big and shouldn't be getting through the gut lining. Those are the two main tests. I, most I've people when they say that. leaky gut, most people when they say leaky gut, they're just referring to some kind of digestive symptom and they're making a leap that it may be leaky gut. And it may be, it but in the is. end, it, it could be. But in the end, that's an effect. I'm I'm always focused on the cause, not necessarily the effect. Right, right, right. Well you know? said. Well, we got time for one more question here. James, sure. you said he suffered a tachycardia event a few weeks ago during a high-intensity interval training workout. Heart rate would not recover from 160 after 10 minutes. Dehydration, question mark, electrolytes. At ER, my phosphorus was low, unknown cause. Yeah, so a couple things there, right? Minerals have a huge impact on um, cardiac and nervous system conduction, how nerves communicate via action potential. You need calcium, magnesium, sodium. You need minerals, right? There's a condition known as hyponatremia where every time around marathon time, people die because they drink too much yeah. and they dilute their minerals, okay? So that's one potential aspect. Now, I don't know about James's case, but I'll put out a couple of scenarios. If James is already stressed and fatigued and is already having a lot of stress in his life and may have some adrenal issues, he may have just overactivated his sympathetic nervous system. And because when you have adrenal dysfunction, one of the major symptoms is, or one of the three things you have to ask yourself with exercise is, do you feel energized afterwards? How do you recover, right? Typically recovering is letting the heart rate come back below 100 or back to resting. So, you know, do you feel like you can repeat the workout after you're, you're done? i.e. letting the heart rate come down, and three, how do you feel that next day or later on that day if it's a morning workout? And if you have issues, then that's a concern. That's typically you're overactivating your fight or flight or your sympathetic nervous system. That's one. And then also the mineral piece is important as well. That's why you know I start my day with a quarter teaspoon of minerals in my water, and I did another one a while ago. And then I, when I don't drink water, I'm drinking like a, a sparkling mineral water like a LaCroix or Topo Chico or Pellegrino or Voss. Um, just cause I like the bubbles cause I used to be a soda addict like over a decade ago, but now I don't do soda. I still like the tingle, you know, tingle feeling. So <laughs> the uh, sparkling water, man is still, I love it. That's great. great. And then if you're a soda addict, just go and get the stevia at Whole Foods. You can buy like the Coke or the root beer or the orange one and just do a couple of drops in your soda water. Yep. And it's like you got homemade soda if you need that substitute or monk fruit, monk fruit extracts. Great. I chatted with, uh, 
William Davis. I told you yesterday. Oh, he's yeah, a big, good. He's a big proponent of, of the Stevia monk fruit blend, which I love. There was actually a, a ginger ale. I can't remember the brand, but it was like so much ginger that it was very, very bitter when you drank it. Like it was potent. And they used Stevia and monk fruit as the sweeteners. It was delicious. But then all the stores in town stopped carrying them. So I cannot get that ginger ale anymore. Got it, man. Got it. And James, if you're listening, if you need more help, feel free and reach out to Evan or myself if if the suggestions aren't resonating with you. For sure. But he asked about electrolytes. Yeah, sure. Try electrolytes. Might help. Can't hurt. Minerals yeah. are very deficient in the soil, even if you've got an organic diet. So absolutely, I would try. Minerals cannot hurt at all. That's like one of those things. I have like a mineral dropper right next to my water filter. So I have two filters, a whole house and a, and a countertop filter. The countertop does infuse a couple of minerals back in, but I still want, you know, a full spectrum of minerals. So I do yeah. keep it next to it. So I grab a glass of water, a couple of drops of minerals. Got it. Yep. That's it. Cool. Well, we got to wrap it up. We got to get back to the clinic calls, but always fun to chat with y'all here on YouTube. And if you've got further questions, reach out, go to justinhealth.com. And my not just paleo site is gone. It's now evanbrand.com. I've been wanting to make the switch. Love and it. After my, after my website went down over the weekend, I said, okay, you know what? I'm never bringing it back online. And I switched it over. So you'll see the new site there. Evan Brand, I love it. Dude, you got the best, you know, you have the best brand when your name's brand. I mean, how can it's, you go wrong with that, right? It's so, it's so easy. Dude, it is easy, man. I love it. Very cool. So anyone listening, feel free and um, reach out or we'll try to put these things up on the schedule so we can get more people on these calls. We just like decide last minute, let's do it. And then it's, people aren't ready for it. So I know we can get a lot bigger crowd next time if we plan it and give you guys a couple of days. So hope you enjoyed. Again, we're in the trenches. We're going back to see patients. I got to go have a nice little meal, get my blood sugar uh, stabilized here before I rock out the rest of my day. Evan, it's been real. We will talk real soon. Sounds good. Take care. Take care, guys.